talk today about uh, Wayfair's playbook for achieving hyper-personalization at scale in the programmable age. Uh, so essentially what I mean by this is uh, last week we announced the rollout of Magellan, which um, is Wayfair's uh, in-house display advertising platform. Uh, we built Magellan to make um, our display campaigns much more efficient, uh, essentially by doing a couple things. The first is leveraging our uh, our data and our insights about, uh, about our target audiences, and then taking that data and uh, being able to build models that eventually will translate into bids and how much we're willing to pay for those users when we see them um, on the internet. And then once um, we serve the ads, we want to make sure that we're able to have a personalized message, and then hopefully that personalized message coordinates with all of the other campaigns that we have um, running across display, across email, across all of our channels. Uh, so we've partnered very closely with AppNexus, leveraging the AppNexus programmable bidder to uh, be a big portion of the Magellan program. Uh, and so today I'm going to go through some of uh, the uh, playbook that we took, um, both in choosing a partner uh, and figuring out what capabilities we need to build and so on and so forth uh, over the past couple of months. Uh, so why don't we start by talking a little bit more about what Wayfair is. Um, so Wayfair is one of the largest um, online-only destinations for the home. Um, so we sell um, online things like furniture, home decor, um, home improvement products, um, lots of stuff for the home. We have five, five brands. Wayfair is by far our biggest. Um, it's in the US, in Canada, and also in UK and in Germany. Um, in the US, we also have several other brands, um, All Modern, Joss and Main, Dwell Studio, and Birch Lane. Uh, we have a massive catalog of products, uh, probably around 7 million SKUs on our site at any given time uh, from many, many suppliers. Um, we had almost 2.3 billion in revenue in 2015, uh, and we're growing at a very rapid rate. Um, one thing, actually going back to the slide for a second, uh, one thing I would say about um, our marketing team at Wayfair is we run all of our campaigns in-house. Uh, we do that because we want to be as flexible and as nimble as possible. Uh, and we found that by hiring a very sophisticated marketing team, uh, both including analysts and then also data scientists and engineers who are dedicated to the projects that we work on, it enables us to um, have much more successful campaigns. Uh, so that's kind of what we do at Wayfair. Um, going back to the display platform that we were building, um, I think at the highest level, the big thing that we need to do is value every impression on the internet. Um, and that comes down to really four, four big buckets of, um, of data that we need in order to do that. The first is first party data. So what do we know about our tar target audiences in the context of Wayfair? Uh, the second is third party data. What do others know about our audience if we have access to that data? And then how do we leverage that? Uh, the third is inventory data. Uh, for us, you know, it doesn't matter how valuable the audience is if you're on either non-viewable inventory or, or you happen to be accessing fraudulent inventory or whatever. So it's really important for us to be paying a lot of attention to how the actual ads are doing on certain sites when we're thinking about valuing impressions. And the last piece is uh, the desired action that we want our audience to take. Um, the value of an impression matters if it's a prospecting campaign versus a retargeting campaign, and, and whether we know we, whether, whether we've acquired that customer before or not. Uh, so at, again, so at the highest level, we're trying to value impressions. When we're building this platform, we also care about a couple of other programmable goals. Uh, things that are really important to us, the first is to have uh, a very high degree of control over our campaigns. Uh, we want them to be customizable, and we want transparency into everything that's happening on the back end. Uh, this enables us to iterate very, very quickly. Um, we can have a feedback loop um, by knowing what audiences and what sites are working very well and which ones aren't, and then optimize their spend accordingly. Uh, we also want to have a, cu a consistent experience across um, all of our touch points with our customers, uh, display being one of them. So we want to make sure that we're coordinating uh, all of the messaging and all of the creative. So let's talk about Wayfair's playbook uh, for achieving programmable success. Um, step one for us is to find the right partner that cultivates innovation, experimentation, can keep up with us, and inspires us. Um, so in this case, it was really AppNexus that we chose, and I'll go through a couple of the reasons why. Um, I think at the highest level, it boils down to the difference between programmatic companies and programmable companies. So when I think of programmatic, I think more like a Model T. Uh, so 
something that can, can get the job done, uh, but it's, it's much more like a, a, a vendor-style solution without a lot of levers. Uh, it, it's not super customizable. Um, it's an off-the-shelf solution. In the case of programmatic vendors that we've worked with in the past, uh, a lot of times it's very much a black box that sometimes works, other times uh, doesn't for our objectives, and then it's really hard to figure out why it doesn't. And a lot of times it's also a managed solution, um, which for the use cases we're trying to solve now isn't always the best fit for us. Uh, a programmable company like AppNexus is much more like a Ferrari. Uh, it, it gives you a lot of, it gives you full control, a lot of levers to pull. Uh, in, the, in the case of AppNexus and, and, uh, and Magellan, we're using APB. Um, we can onboard very complex decision trees into the system, um, and then we get log-level data on back end to uh, be able to analyze our results. Um, think about a programmable platform like, uh, like AppNexus, uh, it can be a little bit dangerous at first. Um, you have a lot of control, and with that comes a lot of responsibility. Uh, what we found is with the right training and the right practice, it's incredibly powerful, and we see very, very strong results. Uh, and then the last thing that really was really important to us about a programmable platform was getting insights from the partner that we're working with, but at the same time being the ones who ultimately are pulling the controls and are ultimately at the wheel of the car. Um, so there are a couple of questions uh, that marketers should ask when choosing a programmable partner. Um, we covered most of these, but I think that the two key ones are really does the vendor push an off-the-shelf product or framework, or is it customizable? Um, that's been super important to us. Um, the second is that, that I also think is really important is, are you working with a company that challenges and stretches uh, your team? Uh, and this has been really, really valuable for us working with AppNexus. Um, we have a team of very sophisticated marketers at Wayfair, but we're not all ad tech experts. Um, so it's, really, it's been really helpful for us to have um, partners that are providing insights about how ad tech works, uh, best practices for building things on top of, um, of ad tech solutions, and then also understanding of how the ad markets work uh, and, and how to fully optimize them. One other thing I would say is um, we've, we've had a lot of luck with that Nexus also um, co-innovating on various elements of the platform, uh, and that's also been really valuable for us. So here's an example of an email that I sent after the uh, Optimize event last November when Brian O'Kelly was announcing uh, the feature in the upper right-hand corner on random bidding. Um, that was something that uh, some data scientists on, uh, on our team were, were suggesting. And within a couple of months, it was uh, a part of APB. Uh, so it's been really exciting to partner together and share use cases and uh, you know, help influence portions of the, uh, the programmable roadmap. So step two is to, to decide what you want to build and what you need to build in order to be successful. Uh, so for us at Wayfair, uh, we're a very data-driven company. Our algorithms, uh, our proprietary algorithms power a lot of different things. Um, we use uh, proprietary algorithms on the marketing side on search as well. Um, we also have proprietary algorithms that power uh, transportation, fulfillment, uh, on-site recommendations, site personalization. And, and, and so on and so forth. And so display, we do not want to be any different from that. Uh, we wanted to be able to bring our own models and our own algorithms and our own insights uh, into our platform. Uh, what we didn't think we were ready to do or want to do is build our own bidder. Uh, that's a very complex problem. There's um, a lot to do before you get any value out of it. Uh, and there's heavy maintenance after the fact. So that was not something that was going to be a core competency of ours or something that we want to engage in. We just want to be able to bring our own algorithm uh, and, and be able to, um, uh, to best optimize the campaigns that way. Uh, other things that we wanted to own was the creative that we were serving uh, when we won impressions. Uh, so we actually built our own uh, dynamic creative solution to, uh, to serve the ads uh, with recommendations that are exactly the same as what we would put on site and also in emails. And what's super cool about working with that Nexus on this one is um, because it's an open platform, we were able to bring our tech to do this portion of, uh, of, the, of the display campaigns, which was, which was really, really valuable for us. Uh, so questions that marketers should ask um, when they're choosing what 
uh, and how to build uh, to realize their programmable goals. Um, I think the key ones here are really, what are you really, really good at? In our case, it's um, under, is bringing deep insights into our target audiences and understanding how customers behave on our site. Uh, and then also, I think another key one here uh, that I didn't mention yet is, do you have organizational buy-in? Uh, building platforms like these and taking advantage of programmable marketing is hard. It takes a lot of time. Um, this was a program that we had buy-in from um, all the way up to our CEO, uh, which was really important as we were continuing to invest to continue to get the resources that we needed to be successful. And then step three is determine what core competencies you need to achieve uh, your, your marketing objectives. Uh, so on this, I, I think the best illustration of this is uh, to, look at, to go back to 2013 and look at how our team was structured as we were thinking about scaling our display programs. It was really, at the time, just, uh, just Matt and, and a couple of analysts who were executing the campaigns. Um, if we fast forward to uh, 2016, we have a much more cross-functional team. We still have analysts who are doing the actual trading and, and optimizations, but we have dedicated engineers and data scientists who are building the models and building the platforms for us. Uh, and that's been uh, really helpful in, in enabling us to iterate much faster uh, and make the program as efficient as possible. But it was a big investment to get there. Uh, one thing that I'll call out on the core competencies is, as we've onboarded these people, they didn't all have experience in the uh, ad tech space. Um, so we spent a lot of time with the AppNexus team on uh, train and trades with um, our analysts to make sure that they were up to speed on how console worked. And then we had working sessions with AppNexus data scientists to compare notes on, uh, on the types of models that we were using and to compare papers. And we've leveraged a lot of the uh, insights that we've gotten from the uh, uh, the AppNexus team as we've optimized our campaigns. So questions that marketers should ask uh, when, um, when choosing uh, what and how to grow their core skills. Um, we covered most of these, but I think another key one here is can this skill and capability be leveraged across multiple parts of the business? One of the really cool things about building our display platform is uh, a lot of the tech that we built has now been able to be used elsewhere. It's kind of a little bit like NASA in some ways. Um, we're using the same recommendations and ads uh, on site, as, as I had mentioned, and the learnings from one feed the other, and vice versa. Um, so that's been very valuable to us as well. Cool. And then the impact of, uh, of what we've been doing. I, I think we've kind of accomplished three key goals. Talked a lot about unified marketing. By having our own platform, we're able to coordinate display with all of our other channels. Um, we've also, by leveraging the AppNexus programmable bidder, we've streamlined our workflow a lot. Um, it's very easy to onboard a new tree without changing huge numbers of campaigns. Um, so that's enabled us to iterate much faster. And then the key point is really we're getting uh, much more efficient over time. So we're getting more profit out of every dollar that we spend on, uh, on display. So I'll close with the picture of the Ferrari again. Uh, it's been great working together with, uh, with AppNexus. We have uh, much more control over our campaigns. Uh, the performance is outstanding. Uh, and uh, working with the AppNexus team has been great as well. So thank you guys.